A roofing takeoff is a report that gives you the dimensions, measurements, and other estimates that you'll need to complete your roofing project to help you order material, run panels, and ultimately bid the job. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to read a roofing takeoff report and how to order sheet and coil based on that information. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel, welcome to Q&A Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett, make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. In this episode, we're talking about roofing takeoff reports, what they are, how to read them, and then what to do with that information. Today, I have Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department with me. Jeff, we're gonna talk a little bit about takeoffs today. So tell me what one is, first of all, and what we can expect when we look at one. So basically a takeoff is gonna be an estimate that you need, whether you're bidding a project, whether you have a project and you're trying to figure out materials, it's gonna basically take that roof, it's going to lay everything out for you and it's gonna give you an idea of the materials that you're gonna to need to be able to complete it. So where do you get a takeoff from? Who provides that? Uh, there's several different companies. Uh, Sheffield offers uh, takeoff service for our contractors. Uh, there's companies like Eagle View that uh, provide takeoff services and roofing works takes a blueprint or a hand sketch and they calculate the information and provide a takeoff whereas eagle view has uh, is able to take a satellite photo and estimate the information based off an overhead view or an eagle view uh, of that project and basically calculate uh, how many panels and uh, different trim pieces and whatnot that it's going to need to be able to complete that roof. Makes sense. And it sounds like something like Eagle View would be good for, for a re-roof or an existing building um, that you can just grab that satellite image and use that information. Absolutely. I will say whether it's Eagle View, Roofing Works, or any other estimating surface, you want to make sure that you go out and you field verify the information after it's done. So satellite photos, things might be hidden that the, the satellite can't pick up. Uh, blueprints, things might not be built exactly to uh, what the blueprint says. So it's always a good idea to go out, field verify, check your measurements. And um, if there's any tweaks, you know, no matter what service you're using, they can usually go back and revise it and make sure that you're, you know, have the most accurate information that you can. Let's take a look at a takeoff and show us how we read one. This is a takeoff from Roofing Works. This is uh, Adam's house that we've done videos on in the past. Just going to run through a couple pages, give an overview of what the takeoff looks like. First off, it gives uh, a 3D drawing of the house. And as you scroll down, it'll give you your different panel lengths. Up at the very top, it's going to say uh, 200. That's They use that as a, a maximum panel length because 99.9% .9 of the time, panels aren't going to be over 200 foot long. Uh, and in this scenario, we were using a 16 inch wide panel. so up here that you you can see the panel ribs you, you can tell that they're going to be 16 inches wide and that's what it's going to be based off of it'll give you panel breakdowns uh 18 foot by two inches there's 57 of them it gives you a waste factor uh, that totals out to 1035 feet six inch total lineal feet and then it breaks it down to square feet as well and it does that for every every part of the roof so it's going to give you a panel length and a quad quantity so when you're ordering this material you know, what, how many panels to order, or if you're pr producing this material yourself, you know what you need to put in for your cut list. Down here, minimum length panel breakout. We'll get into this in a minute, but uh, basically they have a minimum panel length of four foot when it comes to providing the estimate. And it will combine panels that are less than four foot to make up that four foot minimum panel length. Uh, and it'll break down what panels are combined to make up that four foot minimum length. Um, again, like I said, we'll go over that in a minute when we get down to the estimate notes. And then you have your trim pieces. So every roof has trim, depending on uh, how complex your project is, there might be quite a few more pieces with this. Uh, these pieces come in 10 foot lengths. They do include a four inch lap, which is recommended when you're talking about flashing. And then it gives you a total surface area in square feet of how big that roof is. So Adam's roof was a little over 29 squares. Coming down, 
he will have a layout of your roof, including the pitch. And this is where we talk about double checking dimensions. So right here it has an 18 foot, two inch run when it comes down to his uh, rakes. And that coincides with the large, the most, uh, most quantity of panels that he has, which is 18 foot, two inches, 57 panels. Uh, you have your eave dimensions, you have your valley dimensions. So the, again, these are all things you can double check to make sure that your takeoff is gonna be as accurate as possible. Next, it does provide a panel layout. So you have that panel list up top of all the different panels and how long they are. This is gonna show you where all those different panels go. Um, so you have 18 foot, two inch panels here. You have 16 foot panels here. And it's gonna help lay your roof out for you so you know where to start. And, and again, you have all these panels where they end up going. Uh, lastly, you're gonna have your panel notes. And this is where we talked about uh, your panel lengths. So it has information in here to help you read the takeoff. So every panel is rounded up to the next full inch, which is good because I'd rather have my panels a little longer than a little shorter when it comes down to it. Uh, you can always take a little bit off. You can't make panels grow. And here's what I was talking about with the shorter panels. It says any panel shorter than four foot will be combined together to create a four foot minimum panel length. For example, uh, two panels at six inches, one panel at one foot, and one panel at two foot could be combined to create that four foot minimum panel length. All four foot minimum panel lengths are designated on the cut list with an asterisk. Trim is calculated, assuming 10 foot pieces overall length with a four inch overlap like we talked about. And then you have a disclaimer basically saying, you know, just like every, everything out there has a disclaimer saying, you know, it's an estimate. It's only as good, takeoffs are only as good as the information you put in. So. The more accurate you are providing the information, the more accurate your takeoff will be. I will say one thing when it comes to panel lengths and or at least the trim, all the trim pieces up here that are designated have a four inch lap. We always recommend at least a minimum 12 inch lap in our valleys. So that's something you can take into account if, uh, if you're gonna be running your own project or when you go to install it, you have a 22 foot one inch valley here. So it would really be three pieces of trim with a minimum 12 inch lab. So now that we've read the takeoff, we understand the information, what's the next steps? How do we order material using that information? There's a couple different ways you can order material. Um, it depends on who you're using to get your material from. If you're going through somebody that's going to make the panels for you, you can literally call them and say, here's my cut list, send them the information. This is what I need. Again, field verify everything, make sure you know it's going to be correct. And if you're unsure of anything, I would always go a little heavier, you know what I mean? Again, panel legs a little longer. Uh, it's it's not any fun having to cut every panel in the field, but it's a lot better than having all your panels show up short. Uh, your trim pieces, you can say, hey, I need, you know, 15 pieces of ridge, I need 15 pieces of eave, and they'll take and they'll manufacture that for you and they'll send you basically a kit. If you're making it yourself, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit more in depth uh, because you don't have somebody taking care of that for you. Uh, you'll have to know, the width of the panel that you're using, which you should already know for the takeoff, you have to know the coil width that it's going to take to make those panels. And you'll have to order that basically linear footage. When it comes to the trim pieces, you'll have to know your stretch outs for each piece of trim. Say, you know, nine inches to make your eave drip, your drip edge. Uh, you'll have to figure out how many pieces of metal, uh, how many pieces of trim you can get out of each flat sheet and then order the proper amount of uh, flat sheets that you'll need to be able to create all that trim. And uh, in a video we've done before, we have a trim estimator, which basically helps break that down for you. And is a, is a great way to uh, enter your own dimensions in and be able to figure out your flat sheet quantities. The takeoff doesn't calculate certain things. Uh, this is basically panels and trim. It's not gonna tell you how many fasteners it needs to take to install that trim. It doesn't tell you how many clips you need. Uh, one of the things that I do as an easy way to estimate clips is you take your lineal footage of panels. Say you got a thousand lineal feet, you have a clip space and a two foot on center. You can basically figure out that you're going to need 500 clips to install those thousand lineal feet and just divide by whatever your clip space is. That'll give you a rough number. Um, again, I always order, would always order, recommend ordering a little bit extra just for, you know, starting and stopping panels and things like that. And then again, with clips as well, if you got two fasteners per clip, you just, you need a thousand fasteners if you're doing 500 clips. 
Yep. But um, it depends on it depends on how you're going to be ordering it, and uh, whether or not you're making it yourself on on how you're going to use that information to uh, get the materials that you need. And when it comes to being a customer of Sheffield, we do have a video that talks about how to get your takeoff from Sheffield. But Jeff, can you talk about that process a little bit? Um, you know, how, how to go about getting that takeoff from Sheffield and kind of what that means as a customer. Sure. A couple of things you're going to need as far as to be able to, information you're going to need to get a takeoff. Uh, one, it's going to be a roof plan, preferably. Um, Re-roofs and things like that, roof plans might not be available. So you can use a service like Eagle View um, and set, get a takeoff done by them, send it to us, and we can run it through Roofing Works because uh, Roofing Works is the company that we use. Or uh, you can do a hand sketch. And basically the hand sketch looks like the layout uh, that we showed in the estimate that we had. You know, how long your eaves are, how long your rakes are, how long's ridge, valleys, things like that. And that'll be enough information for them to be able to build it. Um, again, takeoffs are only as accurate as the information you put in. So you wanna to try to be as specific as possible. But once you have that information, you contact your local salesperson, you say, hey, I need to get an estimate done. Here's the information. This is the panel I'm using. This is the width of the panel that I'm going to be using for the takeoff. And that's pretty much uh, pretty much all you need to provide. Um, salesman will submit it, and you'll usually have your takeoff back within 48 hours. So who is the takeoff service for Sheffield targeted to, and what are the benefits of being a Sheffield customer in that regard? Estimates are going to be for our roofing contractors um, or anybody that's, you know, bidding projects and things like that. We really look at it as a way to double check numbers, um, a second set of eyes type scenario. All right. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the information. I hope you learned something about roofing takeoff reports. Comment down below. If you have any questions, make sure you subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. And as always, I'm Fab Barnett. We'll catch you again next time.